Growing Deer TV is brought to you by Reconyx, Barnes, Eagle Seed, Muddy Outdoors, Trophy Rock, Antler Dirt, Nikon, and Gallagher. Hey, it's the first week of November here at the Proving Grounds, and it's traditionally rut week throughout the Midwest. This is greater action than when the deer are actually breeding maybe another week from now, because one or two does are receptive, they're chasing, that smells in the air, but it's not all over, so they're moving, searching, where another week there'll be some mature bucks locked down because they got a date and they're not cruising anymore. I want to take advantage of that, so I scheduled to be home this week. Brad and I are going hunting. Had a great hunt. Got on one of our hit list bucks with a lot of surprises. You know, thinking about hit list, I remember when we did the hit list episode, I mentioned that a couple of our bucks were being seen at multiple camera stations, five, six, seven camera stations. Most of them at that time of year, pre-velvet shed, are going to one, maybe two camera stations. Really small, compact home range, core area. And I had a friend call me up and say, hey Grant, that doesn't make sense because you said it's easier to kill the bucks that have a bigger home range. Seems like it'd be easier to get on the bucks that got a small area and you know it. Really just the opposite is true. A deer that lives its life in, you know, 100 acres or less is very tough to get in on. You know where he is, but he also knows every disturbance, every wind current, every pattern, every scent funnel, and you just can't get up with that deer because he busts you. Deer that are moving more simply can't know each thermal and each wind current quite as well because they've got such a larger area to come accustomed to. Crab Claw 10. He's got kind of a funky rack. I'd love to see that up close and personal. <laughs> He's a busybody. He's on a lot of our camera sites. You know, and that's odd. This time of year, deer don't move that much. They're very sedimentary. They start moving more when the hormones change. This one moves a lot. Should be a little bit more susceptible to harvest. So November 2nd, election day, was a cool, crisp morning here in the Ozarks. It's overcast. It's not even time for us to get the camera rolling yet and do our intro interview. Hey, this is where we're hunting. This is why we're hunting here. And we see a doe sleeking through the woods, just an outline right behind us. We're in the woods, not by a field, overlooking an old dry pond. And then we hear some grunting. And it's a ball grunt. It's aggressive. It's violent. And I pull out my grunt call. Blah. Get on that thing and keep talking because we're about to meet old crab claw.
buck down. It was one of those mornings. I've been up, I don't know, I had that feeling, 3.30 this morning, literally up working. Brad called me at 4 a.m. and said, hey, we going today? I said, man, it's November. Yeah, we're going. C7 let loose and ate a little bit of venison this morning. The only real advantage about filming is you get to replay the hunt because all hunters want to re-see that shot right then, confirm it's a good shot. I knew it was a good shot, it felt good, but you want that added confidence. So we get down, we're about 26 feet up. Brad lets the camera down, I'm on the ground taking it untied, getting it all ready. And lo and behold, we find out when we review the footage that it's fuzzy, it's not crisp, clear footage. We could tell it's a good shot, but it wasn't that crisp footage that you like. Well, I reach over to touch the camera and the lens falls off. Gosh, that was upsetting. I was joyous and upset at the same time. Okay, Brad and I are both down now and we're just covered stem to stern, so we're still happy as happy campers. Great color and just oodles of blood. So we're gonna go see what's going on. I've called my wife Tracy. We've got a brand new lab. She calls Crystal that we're training the blood trail. So I'm not worried about this deer jumping and running away, so we'll probably let Tracy and Crystal get some experience here because we may need it later this fall. It may not be as easy as this one. You can see it all over. Okay, this is Crystal's first blood trail in Missouri. It's legal to trail deer. We got a great hit on this deer. We've already reviewed it, but we have a puppy here and we want to train it because someday we might not have a great hit and it's too late to teach your puppy then. So Tracy's been working on it bring Crystal up so we can get a little practice in here because I knew I had a good hit. Sure enough, bring Crystal up, boom, straight to the deer. Just a great family event and it's something I always remember. You know, things go wrong when you're hunting and I'd much rather go wrong with the camera than the shot. Crystal can go there, but I can see it from here. Mmm, yes. Here, look at there. Looky there. No, you can't have those antlers. Come Smell here. that buck from here. Okay. Let me take you back up here and you have your antlers. And look what came to check out. Clearly came circling the tree, checking out this grunting. One of our hit list bucks. Great deer. You can see his tarsals are all stained. Big body on this thing. Gnarly rack. Great first training deer for Crystal. There's a lot of blood, easy for her to follow. The only problem with this deer is it ran about 100 yards straight downhill as they always do in mountainous country. So we're getting ready to admire this deer, have a moment of appreciation, and take him up to the truck because there's no getting the truck down here. A long way up there. Yeah, it is. It's this right here. This is what you send to Jeremy. You know, after the hunt, Brad and I did some checking and Crab Claw had been to eight different camera stations where our Reconnex had picked him up. Great images. It's one of those bucks that has a larger than average home range. He's more susceptible to harvest and just a great hunt. We got some mortals bucks. Upcoming weeks, I've got some guests coming in. It's going to be a great year at the proving grounds. After a harvest, I like to reflect on more than the deer movement, but think about the whole management program that allowed that harvest possible. You know, good nutrition through the summer with the eagle seed beans, great mineral program with the trophy rock, and you've seen pictures of those being used not just an endorsement, I'm talking about physically using and seeing the benefits of it. Just putting it all together. Tracy having a dog train to trail it up and the tenderloin she will feed our family this fall after she marinates and works her magic on them are certainly evident right here. You know what? I hope you really get to enjoy creation at your proving grounds this week and you get to benefit from a great management plan. Thanks for watching GrowingDeer.tv. Okay, later. Right here. It was a little bit higher. Here, right there. Back in. Yeah, I like this. Good. Well, I can see it, Sammy.